advantage and normally rape is done by who women against men or men against women men against women men against women so the men are the wolves so don't put a wolf next to a sheep yeah or next to sheep because the wolf will keep killing all of them mm -hmm. and the man will keep taking advantage of all of them this is a reality akhi it is this is a reality why are we denying this reality you remember yesterday or the day before yesterday we were sitting with uh, dr zak naik yeah you remember when we discussed this issue of western lifestyle and etc and some of the statistics and what did he say about he is updating his uh, records of rape again yeah when he discussed why women need to wear hijab etc and normally he presents some statistics in order to prove that women are vulnerable and they need protection and that's why mixing leads to raping and leads to other problems so he said the highest rate of rapes is in the u.s you remember yes and he said that now he made the calculation quickly as he used to do blah blah blah, 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 blah. which means that every two seconds there is a woman to be raped in the u.s yeah not a man to be raped in the u.s same thing in the uk i remember my data was in 2008 in 2008 the reported rapes in the uk were 167 or 76 a day these are the reported rapes now some of them they expect that the reported rapes are just 30 percent maximum i think that's, yeah that's a 30 percent some of them they say no it goes down to 10 percent okay whatever so why to put sisters in that situation why to put girls daughters in that situation so she needs what she needs a man to look after her now the wali who was the man in her life is telling her my dear daughter i was your man now your man is this person so he is officially handing her over to the man or handing his job his role over to the husband over to the husband he said i was the man okay now the man this job has been taken by your husband under my supervision okay the any that the transfer i am the one who did this i am the one who gave it is it clear okay so she even will feel secure that now my main man is the husband but also this has been done not by myself alone but my father he's the one who did it so she would might feel even more secure more secure okay so this is part of the philosophy of the job of the wali another element of the philosophy of the wali yeah another important one in fact is that girls are obliged and maybe forced to preserve the ties of kinship with their men with their parents with their fathers with their brothers with their uncles etc how is this if she needs a wali it means that she needs me as a father if my daughter cannot get married except with my consent as a father it means that she what she needs me agree or not agree so if she needs me then she should maintain good relationship with me agree so this helps her to maintain what the ties of kinship and this is what i always say to girls be careful you need your parents you need the support of your father you need the support of your mother you need this network you need everything okay from this network or many things from this network make sure that you keep good relationship with them don't disassociate yourself from the family from your father in particular and then all of a sudden say to your father well a brother of a good dean good standard etc 
is proposing, and I would like to go for that proposal. It doesn't work like this. I mean, as we mentioned, the family is the cornerstone of society, but at the same time, family is essential for the individuals as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, for the society and the individuals. So this is one element. But there is another element which is part of the fact that the daughter needs her father. Okay? We are running out of time. I have a very interesting story about this issue, um, an incident that happened with me, uh, maybe. We'll uh, continue, inshallah, after the break. After, after the, the break, break, inshallah, yeah, inshallah. 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 Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, to this episode where we shall continue to talk about the role of the wali during the marriage procedure. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You were just about to tell us an interesting story about the, something to do along the lines of the wali. Yeah, okay. The second year of my arrival to the UK, I was the Imam of Al Muntad al Islami. One of my students invited me to do the nikah contract for him. I'm not that person who is interested in doing the nikah, but he said that the fiancé is also one of your students. Please do come. Anyway, we went. I went. I thought that I will go to their house. Okay. Do it very simple. When I went, there was a big hall. People are coming. and Anyway, they took me to the stage as a sheikh, as the imam, as the one who is going to do the nikah. That was when? At least 12, maybe, or 11, 12 years ago. So I went and I sat uh, on the stage, and the brother was here. Some people were here. I don't know them. So I turned to him. I said, where is the father of the sister you want to marry? So he said, that is her stepfather. Now, I am new to the culture, but I know the word stepfather, what does it mean? But I was a bit confused. What does he really mean? So I said, what do you mean, stepfather, her stepfather? What do you mean? I know what does a stepfather mean. He said, no, her father left them a long time ago, and... She doesn't know anything about him, and this is, he is the one who looked after her. So he's the stepfather. He got married to her mother, looked after her, etc. I said, we need her father. He said, why? I said, he's the wali. He said, this is the wali. I said, no, no, this is not the wali. He said, are you serious? I said, yes, I am serious. Then the discussion took place like this, and... Uh, in front of everyone, we are on the stage. So the stepfather came. It happened that this stepfather, I can mention yani, some details, although it not will be distinguished. He speaks Urdu and Arabic. So he said, do you speak Arabic? I said, I speak Arabic. He said, what's wrong? I said, yani, we are discussing with him the conditions for nikah. And this is a wedding now. And I want to water it down as much as I can because of the context, because of the situation. So I tried to make it easy. So I said, we just want to see things. He said, what, what, what? When he said, what is it? So I said, we are discussing the issue of the wali. He said, another, Anna, the wali. I'm the wali. I said, uh, not really. I had to be honest with him. I said to him, not really. He said, what? I said, the wali is the father. He said, I looked after her. I looked after her. Her father abandoned her. So how are you telling me that you, you need a wali? I am the wali. I said, okay, let us first of all find where the father is. He said, what is this discussion? I said, I turned to the brother. I told him, take me to her mother. So anyway, uh, he rang her mother. The mother came on the side. I said, where is your ex-husband? She said, why? I said, because he's the wali. And she said, I don't know anything about him. I said, come on. You don't know anything? He's the father of your daughter. How come? She said, no, etc., etc. Anyway, 
the discussion escalated and I said to them, well, sorry, I cannot do the nikah. I cannot do the nikah. I need to know where the father is. One of the conditions was not If met. he died, do you have any certificate that he died? Do you have any witnesses that he died? Just to tell me that he disappeared, I left. Yeah? Some of the students were with me, so we left. And they said, if this is the Islamic condition, just do it. Don't compromise. I said, no, I will never compromise. So I left. What happened is that the sister with the brother decided to get married just like this in front of the people because they have a, a whole wedding, etc. So they brought another imam, yeah, and he just done the nikah. But they did not do anything because anyway, their arrangement was that she will stay with her parents for some time and he will stay with his parents for some time. Then the, the sister called me. She said, Sheikh Haytham, please help me. This is the situation. I said, no, you have to find your father. How can he disappear? Well, I don't know. He left me when I was seven, etc. I said, you have to know where your father is. He's your wali. He is your wali. Anyway, she said, what about if he died? I said, if he died, we need a certificate. Get some certificate. I said, don't you know any of his relatives? She said, no. I said, even, even maintaining the ties of kinship, you are not doing it. This is your father. You have to maintain the rights of the kinship. Anyway, she said, let me try. The next day she called me and she said that she found her uncle. Her uncle spoke to me over the phone. I said, where is your brother? He said, I don't know. I said, come on, Akhi. You can't tell me you don't know, you don't know. Now this becomes like, as they say, Indian films. Okay? I cannot accept this. Just tell me where the father is. Anyway, I said to her sister, this is not acceptable. I need the father. And you are telling me that you found your uncle. In one day you found your uncle. Maybe give it two or three days. You will find your father. No way, Shaykhaytham, don't be difficult. I said, wallahi, this is what Islam says. Subhanallah, I swear by Allah that that incident or the marriage or the wedding was either on Saturday or on Sunday, one of the weekend days. On Wednesday, she found the father. Big change, big difference. She found the father. And then we agreed that he, the father will come and he will consent to the marriage. I remember the case. On Friday, they came. The father came, the real father came. She came and the husband came. The father even came with his uh, second wife, with the children from the second wife. And his second wife was a very reasonable, wise lady. She came dressed and she brought the, her children dressed as well. And because I insisted that she brings her father, Subhanallah, she met her father for the first time after almost 20 years. Subhanallah. For the first time. Because of what? Because of what? Because of Sharia. You need the consent of your father. Yes, it is not only for protection, mm. but you will maintain the ties of kinship. If you need him, you will look where he is. And because of this, she came to know where her father is. And the very strange thing about this scenario, they used to live a few miles apart from each other. In London, in West London. Okay? Not even one in South West London or and the other one in North West London. No, both of them almost in the same area. And she has never seen him for almost 20 years. And the other thing is, his wife, second wife, she brought gifts and etc. And she was happy. It should be happy. She was, she, she was, wallahi, she was, may Allah give her barakah. Okay, if she sees the program or, yeah. She was happy. And she brought her children. And she said to them, this is your sister. So now yes. those knew that they have a sister for the first time. And she never knew that she had brothers and sisters from 
her father. For the first time she knew about them because of this. And the father, he was so westernized. In the beginning he did not accept it. Yeah? He said, I have nothing to do with her. Look, this is another problem that has to be solved, which is one of the elements of the philosophy or the wisdom of what? Of having a wali, which is the wali will be responsible. He has to take his role. He has to be responsible and he has to carry the responsibility as what? As a wali. Okay? So then he was pushed by his wife and then he acted as a wali and as a father. Allah, and inshallah they're still happy and maintaining the ties of kinship. Uh, inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. So this lady, who was a very wise lady, she brought her brothers and for the first time those brothers knew that they have a sister. And for this sister, for this girl, for the first time she knew that she had brothers and sisters from her father's side. Hadn't she insisted that she doesn't want or she doesn't know anything about her father? Had me as a, an imam accepted this marriage without her father's presence, then it would have gone and maybe she will continue living all of her life without knowing about her father, without knowing about her brothers and sisters, without knowing anything about her siblings. And wallahi, I have these similar cases repeated many times. And that's why I say to sisters, be careful. You need to maintain the kinship. This is part of the, the wisdom of the sharia. Kinship. This is part of the wisdom. Why we need the wali. It brings the family together. Allah khair, Sheikh. Brothers and sisters, we have to conclude that episode now. But please come back to us next time when we shall continue with the topic of the wali. And I have some very important questions which I myself would like to clear up. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nikah mubarakun, zawajun mubarakun, an nikah min sunnati, ma qala nabi wa